Hello, here we are for another episode, introducing, coming to us from Asheville, North Carolina, lucky you, um, here is Valerie Naiman. Hi, Valerie. Hey, good morning. I'm excited How are you? to be here. I'm nice to see you. To you. <laughs> it's it's supposed to freeze again tonight. Oh, I know, we've been having the, that. Ooh. Oh, God, we had to bring all the plants in again, so. Yeah, here, like, in and out, I've been, I, honestly, I was angry this week at how uh, it was <laughs> unreasonably angry I yeah. really was, was like, <laughs> yeah, like, it was 80 something degrees and then the next morning snow flurries so oh it's just infuriating yeah. crazy it's like anyway like, we like your background you, you wrote a book mystic masquerade so you'll I have did. to give us the link for that Yes, we'll okay. put it in our uh, show notes. Sorry, I, I didn't send these out to you, and I certainly will right away. Beautiful cover for you. Yeah, very YouTube. nice. And adoptee Thank search you. for the truth, Mystic Masquerade. Beautiful. I uh, <laughs> I was told by everybody, do not do your own cover. And um, <laughs> so I hired somebody to do covers, and I I just didn't like them. And I kept giving them the ideas. And the, anyway, I ended up designing my own with my it's help. It's fantastic. And, and people you are say, clearly an artist, like a, Valerie. Looks like a murder mystery. Or it's a wonderful. Yes. I said, no, this is, those are my eyes too. And it was, uh, you know, just bringing forth all the mask we wear as adoptees. Mm, so so yes. many trying to figure out, well, who am I? We Who sure do. Yeah. Well, let's get into that. So All right. well, yeah. <laughs> tell us your, your story, how you would like to tell it. Uh, my story. Well, I'm pretty sure I was adopted in Miami and conceived in Redondo Beach, California. Oh. And that my mother um, split. She may have been married. I've never found divorce records, so I don't really know. Um, but she left and uh, went to Miami to disclose uh, the pregnancy, and what, what did she have a connection in Miami or not that I know of? Huh. She and her best friend like stole their kids. Both of them were married. One was married to my uncle, my mother's brother, and they took their kids and went cross country. I have a picture of them in this old car. Um, uh, I was born either in 1950 or 1954. My mother doesn't remember. And I was told I was adopted at birth. However, my adoption papers were uh, 1954. So it's it's very confusing. Uh, there's That's a big difference, by the way. You That's know, a four-year funny, difference. You should see this. Miami has some fishy stuff going on because yes, we have do. another friend that oh, was born shit. in Miami and his... Her certificate says 1970, yet his adoption, right. uh, the, the the adoption took place in 1969. So yep. like, how is that possible? Right. Really fishy yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's not very possible. Fishy. And the hospital I was supposedly born in is on both my fake birth certificates. And, you know, there's, there's evidence that, I mean, I went there to try and excavate this and the hospital had burned down convenient oh. with all the records and this is yet where, another fire yeah <laughs> this many is fires cold <laughs> babies came from you know there was this dr cole who was like selling babies oh right we've heard of he that. Died yeah. with that i mean thousands. yeah and there was a, we had another guest who was in miami yes. and she was likely kidnapped uh -huh. stolen at birth from that, yes from right. miami I, yeah Miami was a mafia ring, you know, mm -hmm. and so my adopted father, you know, told me stories of being in Al Capone's house, eating off of gold plates. I said, oh, yeah, really? So he was connected and he was a 33 degree Mason. This is my uh, adopted father. And they were very old uh, when they adopted me and they had adopted. Like how old were they? Yeah, I was going to say what's very oh, old. Almost 50. Yeah, that is. Yeah. And this was in Miami. You you grew up in Miami. I grew up in Miami. What, what part of Miami? Out of curiosity, I lived there for a while. Um, I lived at twenty four forty nine Southwest Fourth Street. Funny, I can remember that. And grew up. It's like a block 
from Miami High and then my mother got cancer and they sold out and moved to Hialeah. And mm. so I went to numerous different schools and uh, and then I ended up living in Coconut Grove and I spent most of my time in Coconut Grove when I was in the film and television industry. Mm. So my mother, when she was dying of cancer, it was like her dying wish was to see me settle down and get married because I'd been... Oh, pretty crazy. I've run away from home. I was mm. one of those kids that, you know, just never fit in this kind of stuff. I think one of you left at home at like 50. Sarah. It's me, yeah. yeah. Right, right. I remember what? hearing some of your stories. And went to Miami. Uh, yeah, you went to Miami where your mother <laughs> was, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. it's so crazy because... You know, I got non-identifying information a couple of times. And, you know, my mother was from like the far largest Western coastal state. Of course, that's California. You know, so <laughs> that's what it said. <laughs> yeah. You Weird. know, the video information she had blue eyes and blonde hair. So I thought, well, that part must be true. And um I love how they always put the eye color and the hair color. Yeah, the like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Can you tell us about the medical history, please? Yeah, exactly. A little bit what, more. Um, so, so jumping back for one second, you yeah. your parents were older and they had already right. adopted a boy before Brother. you. How much older was he? Three years. Did they have okay. any um, natural children? No. no. Why did they wait so long? I have no idea. Um, my, I didn't know I was adopted. Oh. You know, I Ooh. wondered and, you know, my brother, when when I was about seven, we had a big birdhouse in the backyard and I used to go, you know, give him water. I was always connected to birds. And so he came in one day just angry as shit and yelling and <laughs> throwing his baseball cap down and the dust was all over kicking up. And I said, what's the matter with you? And he goes, we don't belong here. They're not our parents. Oh, so that oh, must have been when he found out. He so found I'm out. I'm like, he, you know, he always played jokes on me and put BBs on my floor and, you know, sure. brother. On my door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was I had one. <laughs> A big brother. And so, Horrible. You know, I went to my parents and, and I asked them, they were both sitting together in the, in the dining room and, and they looked at me and I was just like, crazy and my mom's like do you want ice cream because that was our go-to I said no uh, what's the matter I said Lee says you're not our parents and they just were deadpan and they mm -hmm. kind of looked at each other and and it was like so I was adopted into a Jewish family <laughs> here I am the only blonde haired blue eyed right and so and was, and he was you so your father was like criminally connected not really. I mean, he became a lawyer. He opened one of the first nightclubs in Miami. He he was a publisher, always wanted me to be a writer. And, but he, um, Do you like to tell the stories of it though? Yeah. And, and when I confronted them, it's like the Jewish mentality of do for you, slave for you. Do you ever show appreciation? Why would you ever ask a question like that? Uh -huh. you know, uh, they wouldn't, talk about it and I, I spent the next the whole day and night in my room like wondering what the hell is going on did you ever ask your brother how did he find out oh yeah he he just my brother is so uncommunicative it's surprising he ever even said that and so he he somehow found out to somebody else it must have been oh, a yeah family or something but he never told me he was he was kind of reprimanded I think for telling me something like that and so he was like zip and ha wait how old were you seven ish seven ish and so, so he, he was, was like 10, 10. yeah he, I'm sure some some adult didn't keep the secret right somebody mm -hmm. somebody blabbered mm -hmm. and so, but for, for my life I just I I, I never knew you know, I remember being in my room just crazy about it, going, Yeah, I don't look like anybody. And I'm they didn't, different. they never followed up with any kind of conversation about it, anything. Never. 
Yeah, and it's I, really confusing, you know? It is. And I asked a few times. I tried to get information. And it's like, oh, well, if you did have another mother, she was probably a drunk. And she's probably oh, dead. Nice. You know, stuff like that. And it, it's like, it was very confusing. And I thought, you know, they always gave me uh, Dutch trinkets, like the little blue and white Dutch things from Holland. Mm -hmm. My uncle would travel to Holland and bring back all this stuff for me and Dutch chocolates, which I loved and and gave me wooden shoes. And so I was thinking, probably Dutch, maybe, you know, maybe. Like, yeah. Yeah. Your imagination just goes. Cling on to that. Wild yeah. when you're, you know, right. don't have the. Right. So I let it go, you know. It's cruel, really, it's isn't it? So, yeah, it is. I had a good life. My parents were. You know, I, I I got a lot being a child. I was, you know, my mother was a stage mother and she um, enrolled me in all these pageants and, <clears throat> excuse me, I had um, tap, ballet, acrobatics, piano, cotillion when I got older. And then, you know, they would take me on Sundays to the deli, to Wolfie's on Miami Beach. I know Wolfie's. <laughs> yeah, it set me up on the table and I tap dance. Oh, my. <laughs> my mom's Shirley Temple. Yeah. So I, like I, a I, show baby. You're with your little baby. blonde curls and blue eyes. Yeah. 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 Shirley I wasn't Temple. shy at all. And so, yeah, Sarah, look at you playing with your hair. I do this all the time. <laughs> It's a self-soothing. I've been doing it my whole life. It's it's the early uh, fidget. Yeah, the it was my fidget thing. I but listen to it in my ears. my dad would like slap my hand away. I couldn't help it. It was wow. how I coped. Isn't that funny? I wonder how many adoptees do that. Yeah, <laughs> and I I'd narrow it down to one little I do hair. The, I do the rocking tapping. You do the rocking. Yeah, I saw. Or the, I tap my fingers down. Here. I saw this documentary on. <laughs> I monkeys, type with my fingers down. You know, monkeys, they would take them away from their, their family and put them, put them someplace else. And they would just rock and rock Aww. and rock. So it's kind of a primal thing. It's like yeah. nurturing. You want to be rocked. Mm -hmm. Very. I mean, I have a memory. My earliest memory is very unclear, but I'm lying on the ground screaming until my voice. I have no voice. Mm. every once in a while that'll come back to me and I'm like oh god so you know my my parents were both busy they had their businesses and you know I was pretty much I, I was raised a lot by nannies and so it's interesting um many things have not changed in the adoption mm -hmm. world as we are discovering and um but one thing that has changed is that there is no way in hell anybody in their late forties or early fifties would be able to adopt a baby now. It's just mind boggling because yeah. you really, you know, especially back then, right. The lifespan was much shorter than it is now. So you'd be lucky to even get, you know, 25 years with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, after my parents passed. It's like, I found my adoption records and that's when I knew. Uh -huh. and, how old how old were you when they passed away uh 20s i was in my early oh, okay. 20s Big i just said yep mm -hmm. yep and so they uh i found um these papers from an attorney it all went through an attorney it wasn't an adoption agency mm -hmm. so i imagine they paid a good price for what they wanted you know a shirley yes. temple <laughs> yeah and that was a that was that was all in 1954, but my two certificates say I was born in 1950 at the Edgewater Hospital. But I mean, that's just a huge difference. It's not even four years. I what know. the heck? I know. And the hospital code doesn't match up with the hospital. You know, you can look those yeah. up. And I'm like, well, well this is really weird. I, I'm sure it was like a just a changed thing through the lawyers. They probably just made it very difficult to ever, you know, right, right. for you to and ever they, find whoever. Yeah, yeah. I was listed as infant Hanson on those on my adoption records, and I'm like, I was right. I'm Dutch. I'm Dutch. <laughs> I'm Dutch. 
And so I went down that route. You know, this was before DNA testing. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, you were I, in your twenties, so it was the seventies, right? Yeah. Yeah. There was so zero nothing, available. Zero. Yeah. Nothing. You know, it was like newspapers and libraries, and you're still not getting anywhere. And it, it was shocking to me that that I I was adopted indeed and I found my brothers and he didn't want to know anything about it I wondered that he didn't want he was like nope I'm done guys are like that sometimes mm -hmm. Later, after I did a lot of discovery his wife got interested and <laughs> then he tested and opened up a Pandora's box that his brother um, always thought who his father was really wasn't. It was his uncle. So he had another whole Pandora's box open, but he's in good relationship with them now. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, people were. So, uh, so where did the course of your life lead you? So you're, so you said you had troubled teen years, uh, yes. you know, oh, yeah. acting out and, yeah, yeah. um, and your, did your parents like sort of help you through that or no? No, no. They actually sent me away when I was in high school because I was, mm. quote, hanging around with the wrong people and blah, blah, blah. And they sent me to Franklin, North Carolina, where we had a summer home. And so, you know. So you went there. Who did you stay with? Oh, I stayed with one of our neighbors at the time from our summer home because we went there every summer. Nobody mm -hmm. wanted to be in the heat of Miami. And it was like this Christian family. And uh, they had. So we're just going to send you to this other family to fix our problems. And yeah. yeah. And so, but it was weird because, you know, I came in in the middle of a school year and I'm like an alien. I'm and sure. The girls hated me and uh they would steal my jacket and stuff like that and um, betsy far um becky she was um also <laughs> came in from florida and so we became best buds and and hung out together but it's like we were pretty good kids and the people i was staying with their daughter you know was sleeping with her boyfriend all this stuff and you know they were the wild ones right so anyway they're the good Christian yeah. family you were sent to, right. to help out. <laughs> and then when I came back to Miami, I moved in with my girlfriend from junior high school. Uh, we had been cheerleaders together in Miami High. And so I finished my last year there. And, and that was good. I got into theater then. That's when I got into theater and started feeling like, wow, I can like school. This is fun. Mm -hmm. So that started my whole theater career. And what, what are your parents doing during this when you move back and you're in nothing? Do you see them or? Well, I see them sometimes. Yeah. But huh. I, I'm living with my girlfriend. You know, yeah. I see this and I have to go to where my friends are. So they're sort of washing your their hands of it all. Kind of. I mean, my girlfriend came and lived with at our house for a while. But by and still time, the adoption never came up. It was just nothing and never until they died. Did you, and I then you, what yeah. did you do? Go, you were going through their stuff. And oh yeah. 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 Found your adoption records. They passed. I got into my dad's office. I got tons of keys and started opening up locked file cabinets and, and I found it and I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> I still have it. I still yeah. have, it. I have all those records and listed me as infant Hanson, this is 1954, doesn't make any sense at all. The one okay. thing I like is I can pretend to be either four years older or younger. So <laughs> I'm either 73, <laughs> almost 74, or I'm 70. <laughs> I mean, well, and just, just you tearing up, it's, that is the whole plight of adoptees, right? I mean, it's still like affects you tremendously it's just it will always and people don't understand this and we don't for me i i didn't even know that i was you know reacting because of it 
Right. I had no of idea course. about like the primal wound or, oh, no. you know, I'd never had counseling my whole life to this day. I've only had counseling once and it, I, I, I didn't realize how that affected me because I was never able to bond. Yeah. Never able yeah. to bond. Never close to anybody. My girlfriend, mm -hmm. my closest friend, we're still friends. But being able to bond or, you know, yeah. dating in relationships. I know. I would jump out of a relationship at the thought of somebody leaving me. Yeah. And get me, out, get out before they get out, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And abandon before you can get, be abandoned again. Or, or choose people who are absolutely unavailable oh, yeah, so you don't yeah. have to exactly you know, yeah you to this day kid yourself into thinking you want a relationship right. to this day i uh, my longest relationships have been no more than three years and that that's crazy and then i did go to relationship training and and tried a variety of techniques once i realized that oh my god this stems from something mm -hmm. and uh, it still didn't help. Yeah. It, it just, it's so deep rooted. It is so baked in. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's Nancy barriers. It's primal. And, and we don't even typically know it, especially if we don't know we're adopted. It's like, where does this come from? What's that's such a cruel, part? that's such a cruel thing not to tell someone and, I mean, and so then, you are technically a late discovery yeah, adoptee, right? Even I even know. though you were told kind of at seven, you weren't. It wasn't right. You were gaslit about it. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And they, you know, ah, it's it's a sad thing. I have learned so much once I got connected into the adopted community. Mm -hmm. After I got not one. But I ended up over the years getting three DNA tests. Oh, yeah, okay. Tell so us about please that. tell us. Yes. Oh, my God. Well, the first one I got was with National Geographic. <laughs> really? So my friend, my friend said, you really need to test, you know, to find out and, you know, support National Geographic. So I did. So they had a genome project, which they've since quit and removed all the records. Oh. I have the original ones. And what I found out is there was absolutely no matches, but I had one of the highest percentages of Denisovan DNA. And I'm like, what's that? Denisovan? Yeah, what, what's that? Right? So by that time I had a computer, right? So I, I'm, I Googled Denisovan DNA. And what came up on my screen was I wished I'd have taken a picture of that screen, but it's still there. I, I looked recently because I was doing some research about it and it says, meet the strangest hybrid into hominoid history. What? What? What is that? So <laughs> that, this is what you're going off of? Yes. So, so I thought, holy shit, no wonder. I'm an alien. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you really are an alien. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh, my God. No wonder you yes. don't belong. Come on. <laughs> Talk about a rabbit hole to go into. Okay, I went weird. down into that rabbit hole for way Thanks. over years. Thank you, National Geographic. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> they had only discovered it within that, that decade. And so it's like there wasn't a whole lot of information. Yeah. So you're stuck, you know, it's like, oh, well, well that's, yeah, there you just go. Going terribly deep to find out where it came from. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, all right. And they, so, so that was 10 years. You had that for 10 years until you could do the next DNA. Oh, no, no. It wasn't that long. I mean, I spent oh, yeah. a year going deep into research and then what, what, what did it tell you about that? <laughs> well, they didn't have much information. But what I did connect it to is O negative blood. Ah. And, um, you know, they that's the only blood they don't know where it came from. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's the only blood that they've not been able to clone. 
Right. And I've so learned a little I, bit about that. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, and I, I you know, I was Googling and I got into these. Uh, at that time, too, you could actually, I joined, had joined all these sites that if you put your information up there and their your bio parents are looking for you, that you can do a match. I did that for years. <clears throat> Uh, before computers, right? It's all letters and never got anything off of that. Let's see, I forgot where I was taking my train. So but... you finally, you, <laughs> you did a second DNA. So after National Geographic, then you did another DNA test. Yeah, that's what I was curious. What's the next I, one? Okay, so the next one I did was Ancestry. Mm -hmm. I did Ancestry and I was so excited. I got all these matches back, but it was like, third cousin yeah and it really needs to be in the second second level doesn't it second or first you know mm -hmm. that's when i find out if you get a first it's probably your sibling and and so i went down that rabbit trail i uh, unbelievable i'm i'm kind of opposed to printing things out but i printed out every every one that closely matched like third or fourth and then I would tape them all together. And I had this matrix of papers started in this room because it's where my desk is. And I had them all taped together, went into my kitchen, down into my living room. Just uh, I think I went through over a ream and a half of paper. And, and, and what kind of background did you have even at that distant level? Were you Dutch? Yeah, that's what I'm curious. <laughs> no Dutchess. And on my on the on the papers, my adoption papers, I'm listed as infant Hansen. Mm -hmm. I had no Hansen in any of my matches, none of them. And so because I kept going down the Hansen route. That could have been an attorney or something. I mean, you never yeah, know. like a hiding of the it definitely was hiding. And that gets into a really interesting story later, but um and my friend came over and he brought these giant four by six rollout um, things with sticky stuff on them so I could stick them on because even taping them together, then I'd find something else and then I'd have to remove it. And I thought I was a descendant of of, of Grant, President Grant. You know, just went. <laughs> well, I thought I was an aster, Valerie. So. <laughs> oh, I just, it, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, so I never got anywhere with it. Gosh. And, and so it was, I mean, and that was what year? Like, yeah, when was that? I, I have to look that up. Um, couldn't have been too long. It had to be right. It had to have yeah. been the last like fifteen years, right? Twenty fifteen or something. Yeah, years that's after I found out I was Denisovan or Denisovan, however the people want to say it. Um, that I went and got another one, and so and then it was a couple of years after that uh, when I got nowhere that I got twenty three and me. All right, so twenty three and me. I had some different matches, and I was able to patchwork a few more things together but you know i sent out numerous numerous messages on ancestry and 23 and me and of course i uploaded it to what is it my heritage or my know, heritage yeah yeah i uploaded that and still didn't get anywhere and it just it went on for this went on for years i'm like i am so hidden uh yeah this is like you were meant to be hidden and you were, I mean. I was, but I never gave up. And so I'm already in my sixties now. Right. And I'm, I think I was in my sixties when I finally got 23 and me. And then from there it was, what am I going to do? And I thought, Oh, I know what I'll do. <laughs> if I can get a, Two psychics to tell me my mother's first name. I might have something or my mother's name. Gosh, so it's so that. sad. The lengths, like having to, I mean. And also just to your age. be denied yeah. our basic right of identity. It's just, yeah. I still. Yeah. And you're getting psychics, it's right? Crime. It's a crime. And then you're, you're in your 60s and time goes on for who you're going to find too, which is so right. sad. My friend, yeah. friend said, you know. You might as well give this up. She's probably dead. Yeah. 
don't ever say that to an adoptee. Yeah. Never. <laughs> you know, I when, still have hope. I never gave up. Valerie, when, when my, when my um family found me, my biological family, they said, the first thing the woman on the phone said is, oh, well, your mother's died. And then started to go into other information. And it was like, this is the person you think about your whole life. You're like, right. well, oh, can I absorb this for five minutes, please? I'm sorry. That's like kind of, I don't know. People don't understand. That's no, so, they don't, they, they don't understand. Uh, it, 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 it's really heartbreaking. Yeah because they don't understand and it's heartbreaking because the narrative is so screwed up and they get irritated you know if i talk about it too much with certain friends or family members they get irritated like oh get over it there's that thing again why are you bringing it over it that's such a great upbringing you were chosen you know i have to remind people like okay think about especially like a fellow parent Think about you just, you had that baby and that baby goes away. How do you think you would feel? And how do you think that baby feels like, and then they can finally have some empathy, but it it takes having to get to, you know, tell, talk to like that. Like, yeah, it is difficult. Yeah, it is. I like, uh, I take us back on your train. I'm going to start using that, by the way. I don't know where my train went, but I don't know. I I like that. I got off at the wrong exit. (laughs) (laughs) Go back to your train. So you're, you're 23 and me, nothing, still nothing, you know, and I'm back and forth and I'm still excavating as much as I can. I got tired of paying for ancestry every month. I know. Yeah. So in the last month that I had it, I used every day up to midnight to excavate more and more and more. And so what did I do then? Then I, uh, oh, I went to India. I'm like, I was on a spiritual quest. Anyway, oh, I know where I was. Psychics. So I found yes, yes. the psychics. largest <laughs> congregation of psychics live in a place called Casadega, Florida. Nice. It's- I didn't oh, know that. I thought it was Cambria. No, that's Wiccan. California. Oh, Wiccans, right. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting my <laughs> mystic <laughs> things right. wrong. Right. We need so, to go there, Sarah, to the psychic place. Yes. My little dog, Matzo Ball. I, ne- I never wanted to have children. I was too afraid. It's like, ooh, ooh, what would I tell my kids? So I never had children, but I had a dog and I named him matzo ball so i would respect my jewish heritage and there you go <laughs> anyway he was my bud and we packed up and i had moved to Asheville. um i moved to Asheville in 1980 after working in the film and television industry for quite a while so all this stuff in the dna test happened after i moved to Asheville. Mm-hmm. um so over that i don't know 15 years i was here for a while before i delved in and my friend told me to ch- to uh, do National Geographic. Um, so but, you and, and uh, Matsubal pack up to go to see some psychics <laughs> in Florida. Matsubal. Florida. <laughs> yeah. So we get there and it's like, all right, there's one hotel and, and it's like they only had one room and they usually don't rent it because it's haunted. People have experiences in there. And I thought, oh, shit, I, I don't care. I'm doing it. But we didn't have any weird experiences, and and I, I, I wish we knew each other back then. <laughs> I booked, I'm like, I'd I booked book it too. Psychics, and you know, you can book at the front desk, and so I booked all these psychics, and then I I started on that routine, and you know, and it's like three of them told me that my mother. Uh, was uh, they saw the ocean, you know, so that kind of confirmed California. And um, I don't know, one of them just told me a bunch of shit about, oh, you'll be traveling soon and things anybody could tell you. Um, uh, the one that was really interesting went into, yeah, I walked in there and it was dark. She had her, you know, she looked like a mystic, you know, with like a crystal ball and a candle in front of her. And anyway, she, when I said, I only have one question, what's my mother's name? And she like went into, her eyes were like, 
you know, ants running around behind her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, it could be a show or it might be real. And then she said, oh, for my mother, she goes, oh, I see a fire. And I thought, oh my, <laughs> she was cremated. Oh. And, and, then, <laughs> and then it's like, no, 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 no. Blaze, her name is Blaze, right? Oh, Blaze. Um, um, Elizabeth Blaze. None of the other psychics use those words. But Elizabeth was the middle name of my adopted mother. And later, much later, I found out that my maternal grandmother's name was Blazer. Huh. So there was bits of truth in what she said. She goes, oh, you're going to meet this man. He's from a foreign country, but you'll meet him in America. You're soulmates and you'll recognize him by this ring. And, you know, she started describing it and I was drawing it in my journal. And then she took my journal and drew it. And I didn't know till much, much later, after I'd spent 11 years in India, uh, where that ring was, because that ring was actually given to me. And I'd forgotten about the, the tapes that I had. But anyway, uh, there are that's, some... That's interesting, actually. Yeah. Yeah. There's. It turned out to be my teacher who I met in America and ended up being his assistant, learning Hindi and Sanskrit and traveling oh. the world with him. So he he was, you know, I thought when she said, you're going to meet this, I thought, oh, I'm going to have a relationship finally. <laughs> Little did I know that it'd be my spiritual father. Um, and so let's see, where's the train? So the psychics at that time didn't get me anywhere. You know, I had some leads to go from, but I didn't get the same name. And, you know, then I hired a detective and three detectives, actually, I went through. And uh, it's so much money and time. It's just, it's oh unreal, right? It's a lifetime here. One of the detectives I found out over a decade later had told me the truth. What do you mean? He said that he was able to get into the records at the Miami courthouse. And? And that um, he gave me the address of where my mother was living at the time of my birth. And um, what else? I forgot what else. Anyway, I drove to Miami, right? There'd never been a house there. And so I assumed he was also a goofball. It's like, I, I wanted to put a bloodhound, play Sherlock Holmes, right? Yeah. I wanted to put a bloodhound on these guys. It's like, I felt like they all lied to me or they just used it as, you know, to make money. And as it turns out, um, one of them had actually told me some truth. and But I didn't know it at the time. There was no way I could verify it. And, and um, the name Hanson meant nothing. Yeah. Did he figure that out? Or you? how did you know the maternal grandmother's name, Blazer? Oh, that wasn't until much, much later. Oh. So after I gave it up again, and then I went to India, I spent 11 years there. I figured, you know, maybe because I saw miraculous things in India. And, you know, I was told that, you know, it wasn't time for me to know and this kind of stuff. Anyway, after 11 years in India, when I came back, it was, um, I, I took, um, I had a map of India and I mapped out around the world and in India where I had been. And that map was also in my journal from years ago with the psychic who told me I'd meet this man and I'd go in a triangle across the oceans three times with him. And I did. So I was like, oh, my God, there's truth in this. So I got out the old tapes and started listening to them. And so many of the things that that one woman had told me ended up later to be true. Hmm. So I'm still on the Hanson role, right? But I have no matches. Um, so that's when I do the three DNA test and get nowhere. And then years go by after that. And it was four and a half, five years ago. 
uh, all of a sudden, you know, I would periodically open the ancestry, open all those, see if there's anything new. And um, all of a sudden, I get a first cousin. I'm like, oh, oh shit, I've got it. Now I got it. And so, because I knew that could be yeah. my sister, right? And so I um, tried to get, you know, I, 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 yeah, I Googled, I got on Facebook, I looked all over, I found a picture of her. She looked, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm like, oh God, I'm close. But I, there was no way to um, uh, get a hold of her. And I got, um, at that time, I had gone to the, um, I'm skipping around here. But I went to the American Adoption Congress when it was in Atlanta. My friend talked me into going and uh, there was no rooms left because I went at the last minute, but um, it was great. I jumped into everything and uh, I ended up being invited to stay in a room with Mary Wilson, who is a search angel in Texas. And we stayed up that night. Her story is amazing. Um, she was a birth mother. And so uh, anyway, when she left, because she had to catch a cruise the next day before the event was over. So I got her room and uh, we became good friends. And when she left, she goes, I'm going to help you. Because originally she said, I only do Texas. So she helped me. So when I got the first, you know, Hint. Yeah. Husband, I'm like, Mary, look what I got. And so many. So she got online and found somebody within that triad that, um, meanwhile, she had sent me things before that. It's, oh, we think this might be, we think this might be. And then Lana got involved too. And then they couldn't get anywhere and got some detective in California who didn't get anywhere. And I'm like, oh, screw. <laughs> and, um, but, but she got online and connected with somebody um, involved and got the message through and I got a phone number because she had the people search or whatever. Anyway, I got mm -hmm. a phone numbers and I was like nervous calling them, calling them, no answer, wrong number, blah, blah, blah. You know how that goes. And yeah. then I finally, I finally got a hold of some man because who are you? What do you want? Nice. <laughs> right. And so he turned out to be my um, uh, paternal sister's husband. And he was 15 years younger than her. And he put me through two days of sc screening. Scrutiny or and yes. And then he finally said, okay, well, I realize you're not a terrorist. And You'll know when you meet me why it's so important and she wants to call you. She will. So I've skipped way ahead. That's my. That's turn. that's OK. <laughs> and, and so um, I did get to unite with my sister. But that's another strange story. Was that your your mother's uh, daughter? This was my father's. father's. OK. And the reason she tested is she wanted to know who our father's mother was. As it turns out, he was also adopted. Nice. So many of the names changed, right? So there was no trail to go uh, on. Yeah. And they had her, my sister's mother, who was not my mother, um, had spent her life like writing letters to find out who our father's mother was which is another interesting story. When I found that, when I finally met them in Vegas, that was a trip. Um, he was dead, but I got your to father, know. your father was dead. Was he like an orphan train baby or anything like that? No, I don't know a whole lot because we don't know who his mother is to this day. I'm, I'm almost close in finding out. Um, I did get his original birth certificate and his mother. It's uh, unbelievable. On the certificate, it has a, a slot that you check or write into that mm -hmm. says legitimate. Right. We have saw this recently. Mm -hmm. And it says no. Right. Yeah. We just saw this a couple oh, days the first ago time. on somebody's birth certificate. Oh. 
So, but I had the address of where she was supposedly living and I got to Google it on that and find it. And then um, it, it, that belonged to some, a famous film screen actress. That's silent films, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure my grandmother on the maternal side is a silent film screen actress. And my grandfather, as it turns out, had theaters. Oh, well, there you go. Los right. Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. And you're and you're theatrical. I mean, yes. that's kind of cool and to find I out look about more yourself. like my grandparents than anybody else. And it, it, that was so shocking to me to find out of, oh my God, it's in my DNA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh. But go, going back to my mother, because that was my main focus. Who cares about the father? I thought, oh, well, <laughs> you know, he probably got her pregnant and left her. You, you create these right, yeah, right. scenes in your mind. And so I was always weary of men. That affected me. Mm -hmm. Didn't trust them. Didn't, you know, <laughs> I just had this ugh, chip on my shoulder, which wasn't wasn't the case mm. um like many of us we we uh, all we have is our imagination right, right? Uh, it can go wild so my mother going back to my mother um we found uh found out who it was and i have pictures of her and i was able um to make contact through um, somebody the two women that left California and went to Miami yes both had kids and so they were raised together so I was able to contact the other woman's daughter okay okay I'm gonna call her Macy and so I finally got a hold of Macy because we got a hold of her daughter who was online. And Mary, my search angel, uh, sent her a message without me knowing it and called me and said, get online quick. I sent a message. And I go, oh, shit. So, um, yeah, so I was, she said, yeah, I'll tell her right away. Because she told her I'd been trying to find her and look for her. And it was very important that I talked to her. So I ended up talking to Macy. And Macy's like, the message I sent Macy first is, hi, we went to the same high school and um, I'd love <laughs> to connect with you, you know, because you don't want to say, hey, I'm adopted, you know, can you open yeah. up to me? So you have to be sneaky. So then it was, I finally did get to talk to her. She seemed like a nice person and um, told her I was really wanted to connect uh, with her aunt first because I had some private information to share. She wouldn't give the information. The numbers I had didn't didn't go anywhere. So um, it came down to like, <clears throat> um, oh, you know, your 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 father is my uncle. It's like, are you saying? that you're my aunt's daughter type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. What makes you think so? So I laid it all out to her. And she goes, this is the most exciting thing that's happened in our family for a while. Yes, I will call her and talk to you. And uh, I promise to get back to you. So, so she was alive. I'm on pins and needles. It's like, oh God, <laughs> oh, oh. So she calls me the next day and she goes, well, I talked to aunt. I'm going to call her Eminem, my mother. That was my nickname for her, Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. Eminem. So I talked to um, Eminem, and uh, she she didn't, you know, fess up to anything. Oh. Um, so are you positive? I said, uh, yeah, 100%. 100%. She goes, all right, well, I'll talk to her again. And this went on and on and on. And finally, I get another call back that says, meanwhile, I'm pulling my hair out, right? right. All I 
do. At that point, I had her address. And I'm like, Mary, you want to go with me? I'm driving down. And she goes, she goes, I'm doing everything I can to get you to calm down. Do not go down there yet. And so, I mean, I had to see her one way or another, even if I had to pretend like my car was broken down in front of her house and ask for help, whatever. I had all these scenarios that I could do. My whole mind was like racing mm -hmm. trying to, to be able to just lay my eyes on her. Yeah. Maybe not even talk to her. Just lay my eyes on her. I'd have done anything to do that. I'd look for so long. So anyway, um, Macy calls me back and says, all right, um, Eminem said uh, she will call you within a few days. I'm like, yes, great. Day one goes by, no. day two goes by, day three goes by. I'm like, I'm Googling, what is the definition of few? What did <laughs> you know it doesn't have a definition? Yeah, and right. I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, I wouldn't leave the house and I would take my, you know, I wanted to record everything. I wasn't right. going to miss a minute of this. So I had everything set up. And then it was like, you know, after day three, it's like, oh God. You know, I go out to the deck and then, and then the phone rings and I come running back. And, uh, you know, I so many spam calls because I had to answer every yeah. phone call at that point. So then I'm, you know, I, I, I took my uh, phone uh, as far away as I could from my Wi-Fi out to my gardens to see how far I could actually go and have my friends call me and see how long it took me to run back to turn it on. It was crazy. Those days were so crazy. And I was a singer in a band and they're like, come on, we, we got to do this today. I said, I'm not going anywhere till till I talk to my mother. And they were like, all right, listen, this has been going on too long. Just come. If she calls, you can call her back and then you'll be calm. I said. So they talk me into it. I go out my back door, do my kitchen, do the laundry room, community laundry room, and get in my car, turn the engine on, and backing up, and the phone rings. Uh -huh. And from Florida. And so I just stopped my car went in. I ran in, and there's two locks because it gets frozen in the laundry room. So I had to get through. <laughs> So I get to my, and I had everything I wanted to say in a piece of paper that wasn't in my pocket. Oh God. And so I knew I wasn't going to make it to my computer. So I, I stopped in my kitchen and I like, hello, you know, calm <laughs> is like, good. Hello. And I get no response. Hello. Mm. And I thought, oh shit, it's another spam. Hello. And then I realized my sound thing had flipped off after all oh, my no. And so I, I turned it back on and I heard this voice going, I, when I'm saying, cause she, she could hear me and said, right. who is this? And I turned it on and it says, this is your mommy. Mommy. Your mommy. Wow. <laughs> I flipped. I wasn't able to move. I wasn't able to say any. So I, oh, well, my phone was up. Sorry, I was yelling, but give it a little, you know, this kind of stuff. And and then I realized, shit, I'm not recording. So I ran in and 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 started recording them, and we had a very long conversation. So tell us the the circumstances of your birth. Yeah, like how and. Well, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. So, so did I she tell you? I said, yeah, and I'm curious about my medical history. I fainted my whole life. Were you ever a fainter? Because no, I was never a fainter. I said, maybe, maybe my my thinking now is that it was a birth trauma with the blood and being separated at the same time. And so later I became an epileptic. I fainted so much, but I cured myself from that. Um, but anyway, I, I, you know, I said something, oh, shit, there's so much to the conversation, but um, I, she said, well, I don't remember going to the hospital. I don't remember um, anything. Why, why did she not remember? 
Is this a, a she blocking was out? She was 94. Oh, okay. She looked great. But she, I got good DNA. Did yeah, you, so her. have you met her then? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. okay. So you are in reunion. Well, was she passed away last I, Right. I'm okay. okay. I, I, Sorry. Yeah. I mean, okay. how, how fantastic that you got to meet her. Yes. I mean, really the odds were not in Very. your favor considering. Right. Right. I mean, I wanted to go down right away, you know, and I, 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 I like. Say, oh, well, I'd like to see you. Could... She agreed to meet me if I'd be a secret to her family. Mm. Yeah, there you go. So I'd often we anything, hear. Right? I'd agree to anything just to see her. So we, of course. We, you know, it's like, when can I see? Oh, well, I'm busy here and busy there. I've got a busy schedule. She's like, and her voice was identical to mine. Mm. Um, like I was hearing myself talk. And so, anyway, finally, through a whole bunch of stuff, she was willing for me to come. And I told her I'd stay in an Airbnb. She goes, no, you'll stay with me. I said, yeah, but I'm a secret. How's that going to work? She goes, I've got this. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Nobody's going to know. And so I went and it was just amazing. You know, and I did ask her, it's like, <sighs> Must have been really hard yeah. for you to give give me up. Yes. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! She didn't say that. Oh, Valerie! She did. she did? And and then she said, "But your father looked for you for a long time." Aww. Oh, I'm like, oh god, that just blew away. Yeah, and I never thought about. It. But she was a character. We went out dancing. She loved to dance. I loved to dance. So uh, there was that. Plus the fact, I mean, she was skinny and I've always been plump. So, but I found out later my father was plump. So, you know, it's like you gr grab these little things of of your mirrors. Like, oh mm -hmm. my God, your eyes are like mine. I, I, I'm dying to know what was your... Uh... Yeah, me too. National, you know, you're not Dutch, but what what were you? Sweet. I was um actually my my mother's family came from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So I was mm -hmm. this. And um, but I'm 97, 98% British English, you know. There you go. And yeah. no no Hansen. Nope. No, no, that's just something. And so so nope. can you bring us up to speed to where you are today you're in touch with your uh with your siblings and and all of that well, she had she had a son after um after me three years after and uh a daughter three years before me that she took to Miami and who will not acknowledge me is like so she had a daughter she took to Miami gave you up and had another son yeah you're the one given away. Right. And then with no problem, obvious. I mean, well, no, it's easy for her, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I got to know my brother, who's three years younger, and we're in communication a lot too. Mm -hmm. And so, then on your father's side? That's a, that's another involved story. Okay. We we'll we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to put that one on on hold. We'll have to read your book. Everybody will have yeah. your oh. book so we can wrap these up it's it's really been such a pleasure talking to you and i'm Just, really glad at least all these years it took that you got the answers were you know i mean and and i'm just yes. I, as as you were you're so theatrical that i was just picturing this being a movie yeah, I, mean, I was thinking <laughs> the, the psychics thing. and you and matzo ball and uh, road uh, trip <laughs> and going to india and i mean it's I'll so Amazing. I'm tell you one one quick thing if we have time is that quick yes I'm still bothered about the Hanson thing and so I finally yeah. for my birthday I asked my mom asked what I want my birth father and I said I want my birth certificate will you sign all these papers because I had them all and my other parents were dead I had all their stuff so I sent it into Florida Vital Statistics they got back to me later and said you sent in the right stuff but that's not your mother's name. 
And I had her sign an affidavit, right? Oh my and gosh. Was. And so anyway, that goes by and I said, you know what? She was a gambler to my birth mother. I said, I'll bet you a hundred bucks that you put a fake name on there. She goes, okay. I never got that hundred bucks, but that's what happened. And I had her go down and notarize at a place they knew her anyway. And they didn't even look with the last name of Hanson. Bingo. Oh my gosh. So she put the fake name. Your or whole life, you know, did. Valerie, it's really crazy. Yeah. What you've gone through and then how nonchalant other people's actions are in someone's life is very, and then your father, you know, the one he looked for you. That's, it's sad now, but it's so healing too. Yeah. My mother said she didn't know any of his family. And when I went to Vegas and found them, found out that she was a really good friend of his, an old flame and had always been a good friend of the family. So she lied mm -hmm. about a lot of stuff. There's yeah. oh, lies I'm lies within lies within lies. And please send please. us your book, please. Yes. yes. And, and, yes. and get, and we'll put a link in the show notes. So listeners, you can, you can read this fascinating <laughs> journey. It's really, yeah. you've been just a really just fascinating. <laughs> Thank you, Valerie, for sharing yeah, put my website time. in there because yes. if you go my website, there's part of my story. So oh, we'll put every yeah. album of uh, my adoption story songs. And there's part of the book in there, part of the audio book in there. We so want to keep up with you. Yeah. Send, send, <laughs> send everything to us and we'll put it all in. Thank you for all you're doing, getting this oh, stuff. Out thank for you. Us. Having the adoption community is a godsend. It I sure like that is. you're ending on that because that yeah. is the truth. Yes. We're not alone. We're not yeah. alone. Like yeah. Every adoptee to please write your story. Yeah. And if you need help with that, get a hold of me. Right. And story we are, and our, our podcast is all about creating an, uh, an oral history. Yes. Um, but we do need written histories too. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, because this, we have to one day, you know, generations from now look back and see just how yep. this how this was hopefully it'll change but yes thank oh, you valerie thank you valerie. love talking to you <laughs> bye bye bye, bye.